Marcus. How are you today? I'm fine. How are you? I'm doing well, Marcus. Thank you so much for giving me your time today. No problem. Thank you. So how was your day so far? Well, decent. Doing some work. Going to the gym. Fantastic. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah, that's it. So, Marcus. so Marcus, your debut album Goal was out last Friday. So would you like to tell me a bit about the songwriting and production behind this new album? Yeah, sure. I mean, first of all, it's finally out. This uh, pandemic thing really put a hold on things when rules sometimes kept us out of our you know, rehearsal facilities and out of the studio when soon as anybody had the slightest cold, we could basically do nothing. So, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, the recording process was really long and also the mixing process was really long. Um, but in a way, it also made sense to hold on to it until the pandemic sort of blew past. So once we actually released it, we can go and do shows again, which we did last Saturday in Stockholm. So, but you asked about the songwriting. I mean, that's something that's been taking place over probably the last 10 years. So some of the songs that we're releasing now that's previously been played live many, many times. It's been, I don't know, written in 2009, actually, okay. some of them. Uh, but they find they didn't make the EPs, but now they're on the album. So it feels great to finally have everything out there. So sometimes people get the impression that we're, we're too soft or too hard if they listen to just one or two songs. But now we have the entire spectrum out there. Anything from the the happy party of the Shaggy Ramid kind of drinking style song yeah. all the way through World of the Three Hammers, heavy B harmonies, you know, B minor harmonies. So, and of course, all the way to El Slaughter March, which is just pure violence in the chorus, you know? Yeah. So it, it's all out there now and it, it feels great because now I have, I have the option to show to the promoters uh, depending on what they like. We, we're a pretty, we're a broad band in that way. Like we can do many types of audiences. I played anything from the regular drunken metalheads, leather jacket kind of guys, you know, to seated audiences of young girls and <laughs> old moms and dads, and they're still loving the stuff because it's it's heavy and it's metal, but it's still, you know, catchy, melodic yeah. and uh, and funny in a way. I, I mean, I'd say, obviously that's up to the listener, but you know. Fantastic, fantastic. And uh, did you put some kind of concept into this album? Well, yeah, our concept. I mean, it's not just for this album, it's for the entire band. We we play something we call dwarf metal. And uh, I mean, for us, when we invented the thing, as we actually did, before 10 years later, finding out someone in Italy also invented it, even though it sounds vastly different. Um, we wanted something that was a little bit more melodic, happy and catchy with a twist, but still had its one of its feet in melodic death metal and influences like Eamon Amart and meeting up with the humor of Fintroll, but with a sing-along choruses of bands like Ailstorm. Yeah. And we won we didn't really define those influences to begin with. We just tuned our guitars down into B standard and we started looking for riff that sounded beard, mead, or axe. <laughs> those were the three words we were sort of looking for, but in a guitar riff context you know what i mean um, and that's how it all began back in the basement of a university and in, in 2009 um does i mean the concept is it's really it's a lifestyle right Dwarfs, they, they're not just these bearded fellows from you know lord of the rings and warhammer world of warcraft whatever they're it's always a very tight brotherhood it's always business before pleasure. Nobody's slacking out. Everybody's getting their job done, be it in the mine or on the battlefield. Get the job done. Take care of your brothers. Celebrate with some meat and some roasted boar. Um, translates well into how I act in real life, really. I, I get the job done and I have a beer, you know? <laughs> so it, it, it ties into that as well. But then obviously in a very sort of nerdy fantasy style way since all the lyrics are fictional taking place in different fictional dwarven universes one with, which we made ourselves some are taking place in the uh, lord of the rings universe and some actually in the world of warcraft universe so 
anything dwarf fantasy that ties into the feeling of grabbing your axe and getting the job done and chugging your beer afterwards, that's pretty much what we've been going for. And it turned into this very wide musical spectrum. N- not like like Windrose, who rose up really famously and now defined dwarf metal, so I'm constantly being compared to them. <laughs> Sad in a way, but I mean, they sound more like I'd say Blind Guardian and these power metal guys. Uh, for me, that's too happy. If I'm thinking a dwarf, I'm thinking roaring fires, underground, darkness, you know, blacksmithing, yeah. all these um, orange golden colors of heat. And I, I need that to be represented in the music as well. So we're, let's say we have a heavier approach on it than what they have. And now the album is out, so we can finally show it and hope yeah. people agree with me. Absolutely. Fantastic. And uh, talking about the album, 13 beautiful songs, great songwriting, amazing music. It is fun. It is metal. It has celebration. It has everything. It never gets bored. It's like fun to listen to the entire album as a whole. So thank you so much for coming up with a fantastic new album. And as a creator, how do you feel about the outcome of this album? Yeah, I'm very happy with it in every aspect, actually. I mean, it took its time, but that was all time well spent put into the details, uh, all the way from the choosing the what key the songs are into, the notes, the riffs, the drum parts, how we arrange the songs, how we theme the lyrics, but also how we build the lyrics with rhymes and how we pronounce them and how we co- connect them together with the music. And all the way through to the lead guitar work, all the guitar solos for me are actually another lyric part. I mean, that might be hard for some to grasp, but when I'm playing these uh, slow kind kind of solos, as I do in, for example, Hidden in Runes, uh, I'm progressing the story. In my mind, I'm visualizing what's happening in the verses and in the choruses, and then something is also happening in the solo, and the verse after that takes part after the solo with so for me, it all ties together. And that might not be apparent to everybody that listens to it. They might just be like, okay, that's a catchy solo or whatever. But I think the fact that I know that it does makes me perform it in a way that makes the song so much more enhanced. And we were allowed to do this uh, with the power of our wallets, I would say, in a very good studio, very professional quality on the recording and the mixing and everything. We, We've been able to dial it all in exactly like we want it. We haven't been stuck in any in any way. We've had we used line signals on the guitar, so we were able to reamp them using both a PV angle and Mesa Boogie amplifiers, mm-hmm. getting exactly exactly the tone we wanted. Um, also able to record songs from very different areas and put them in a in an order on the album. I would say that makes sense. That shows our, our broad aspect, but also has a sort of a progression in itself. And and then the cover is amazing. I'm still mind blown by that. We we were contacted by this guy called calling himself Tabit in the Czech Republic. And he says, you know, hi, I do dwarven art. Take a look at this. And he shows us some amazing pictures. And we tell him, okay, we're Baruch Kazad. This is what we do. This is what the song gold will be about. Draw us something. If that's what you want to do, that's where you contact us. Draw us anything, freehands. How, how do you depict us, you know? And that's what he came up with. And we were just mind blown. I think the only slight changes that were made, actually, that there were five dwarves. There was the, the pickaxes and the, the gold piles, all of this. Uh, it was missing drinks. So I told him, we need a couple of meads, mead mugs and beers throw into that, and it's perfect. And and he drew in these arms in the background, like pouring a mug of ale on himself or whatever. And uh, okay, that's it. This is as much us in an album cover as we can possibly get. Mm-hmm. It was actually just supposed to be a cover for the single. We were going to release Gold as a single before, but uh, the picture came out so great. So Gold ended up being the title of the album and we used that picture. So I'm very happy with that as well. Interesting. I'm also very happy with the producer. The way I was able to record uh, the vocals, mm. um, guitar parts took quite a while. We've been using 
uh, older guitar player Eriksson Barrier for a lot of rhythm parts on some of the songs, and then Dino Sperman come in, and I'm I'm playing something on every song, but far from everything, and even down to the point where we decide which guitar and which person's fingers makes this particular riff sound the best instead of just recording what we would play live. Like, for example, I when we perform live now, I only do vocals. When we do El Slaughter March, up until the solo, I pick up the guitar and I play that. But on the album, I do the main riff because I, I felt my downstrokes were needed for that. It, the riff just wasn't the same when, when it was done with alternate picking. So we, we really made everything until we were happy with it. Like, not blowing through it, just this needs the downstroke and this needs this and this needs that. And the vocal parts, I was also at some of these times, <laughs> the producer was my gym partner. Yeah. So we ended up like meet meeting up after work and then using my fresh voice for some crystal clear, really, you know, articular text part of the main lyrics. And once I got a little bit of sore after a full hour of screaming or so, we used that rougher voice to do the ad libs and the dubs. And after that, we went to the gym <laughs> and we pumped iron and we said, thank you, good night. And we kept doing that every second day. So I could perform maybe just half a song in one session, but I can always do it with a fully powered voice, rested, ready. And none of the parts really made me struggle in a way where I'm like, I can't make this sound the way I want to. And if I couldn't, we just recorded it another day and it was always there. Took many, many months to do vocals this way for, what is it, nine songs on the album that's been recently recorded and four are from a previous one, the bonus tracks, but mm -hmm. it was very worth it. And the pandemic, in a way, gave me that breathing space as well. We weren't pushed to release the album. We could wait. It's been done, actually, since this autumn. Some people have, you know, pre-bought it on uh, some shows actually but now we released it digitally and uh, I mean the reviews are great we're getting shared here and there YouTube went up well, over two weeks to almost 20,000 views which uh, I mean compared to some of the giants on I don't know nuclear blasts that's nothing but for us that's huge yeah. I mean compare that to Katada Menu on Spotify it's been out for five years and it has something like 28,000 listens so to get 20,000 in a week was amazing. And all, all across the board, a lot of people were just like, this is something that's been lacking in the scene. We need this music. Thank you for making it. We're going to share it. That, that's been the response I've been getting. I mean, obviously, some, some personal choices are like, no, nah, this is too rough for me or this is too soft for me. But overall, the response is that it's unique and it's well-made and it's fun to listen to. Absolutely. And that's fundamental for me. It's um, really heavy music that makes you happy. You don't have to be all, all sad or angry because you listen to metal. You can listen to it, bang your head and pump your fist, but you're happy, you know? <laughs> the, that's what I would add to people's life. You know, we all struggle. We have regular works, some of them pretty boring. Everybody's waiting for the weekend so you can go see your metal band. And I think that hour when you see the band, you should be happy. So I write <laughs> Try to write heavy music that makes you happy. That's what I'm going for. Fantastic, fantastic, Marcus. And uh, did you had something special last Friday on the day after release? Yeah, how do you mean something special? Kind of release party or something? Well, I mean, that, that would be on the Saturday because uh, Friday, I mean, we live way up in the north of Sweden and we were playing Stockholm. Mm -hmm. So on the release day, I couldn't really do any PR work on my computer or anything because I was driving all day. Uh, the Friday, the release day was uh, 13 hours in a car. And then, I don't know, <laughs> some one or two beers in the evening before sleeping on an inflatable, what, what do you call it, inflatable bed, you know, mattress and then getting ready for the show on the Saturday. But that was pretty much the official release party. We got to play with five other really, really good bands at this place called uh, Fredas Mangel Järfella Stockholm. Where we played with, uh, you know, Creeping Flesh, Feral, and Envig, Helvete Stromben, and uh, some. Um... Now I named every band except one. Now I feel bad. <laughs> Why do I forget it? But it's, 
really cool young kids at age 17 playing thrash metal. They were amazing. And, uh, you know, place was crammed. Everybody's happy. Everybody's uh, super drunk, you know, more sober before we played, way drunker after we played. We even got the comment from the bartender. The, the, the hour after you guys play, they always buy the most booth. That's why I like booking you guys. <laughs> so I hope I don't cause any alcoholism, but I like that I have that party <laughs> impression on people. But, you know, great evening overall. People are buying our merch. They're buying the album. Everybody's loving it, laughing. You know, there's this uh, terrace outside of the club where we were playing that we can still stand drunk singing Iron Maiden harmonies and people are, you know, yeah. filming it live and posting it on their sites. It was just everything I could ask for in a release party, really. Fantastic. Fantastic. And a couple of weeks back, you put up the video, live video for Chuck Your Meads. Uh, great song again. And do you have plans to come up with an official video from this album? Yeah, plans, but no, nothing really concrete that I can promise anything, but as uh, something I've always wanted to do, and I need to find um, all the budget for it, really, to be honest, but I've been wanting to make a live acting role play style kind of video for the song Elf Slaughter Marsh, where it depicts, um, I don't know if we heard you heard the song and listened to the lyrics properly, but the idea behind that song is that it's not actually a war, like a war of hatred or over land or something like the dwarves and the elves aren't killing each other in the common sense of a war that you would do to gain each other's territory or anything like that. The song is actually about vacation, taking some time off from the real wars of fighting goblins and orcs and trolls and, you know, taking a stroll and beating up the elves just for fun. That's what the song is about. And I think that would make a really great video about playfully beating someone to death, burning down their cottages and dragging them through their own blood and, I don't know, kicking their carrots away or something. We could do a lot of fun things with that. Yeah. Uh, while still, you know, headbanging in the woods. Yeah, that's one idea, idea I've had. But, you know, it costs a lot of money to make a video like that and you need actors as well. Yeah. Obviously, we can't be the elf parts in it so we need to hire some people for that but um i mean it would be um a bit optimistic of me to call it a plan but it's a dream um yeah i tend to make dreams come true i mean gold started out as a dream that was uh if you asked me when i started writing this song in that basement for what 14 years ago that i would release an album that's gonna be this amazing and we're gonna get a review in sweden rock magazine that would be mind-blowing to 14 years younger me so we'll see if we can't make that dream of an old slaughter marsh video happen as well fantastic and uh any big touring plans for 2023 we'll see 2023 i mean if we had one it would probably be announced already but we have a tour of uh a tour in the making of eastern europe pretty much uh, might be a couple of one-offs in Sweden, maybe Finland as well, but there's one one promoter that works actively to send us through. Um, I mean, we've been, we've been some of these places in uh, 2017 already. We did one with Europe tour. But we're talking about the same territory of um, mm. Czech Republic, Hungary, Bulgaria, Romania, playing all these fantastic venues over there. So I'm hoping I can make that into reality. It's just, it's, it's always about the budget. Yeah. Gotta spend my time this winter trying to make some extra money on my sound engineering work that I do for a living. So I can put that aside and buy a bunch of the stupidly priced gasoline that we have these days to get us over there. I mean, the venues want us and the people there, they want us and they'll probably buy a t-shirt and a CD or two. Um, what makes touring hard these days is that just existing as a human being in a price range that's made for people doing you know wearing a suit and doing businesses at hotels and meetings and corporates and stuff like that and we're we're workers going around trying to play music on the side as a as a hobby but trying to do it professionally and seriously but it's still sort of a vacation fund for us that we have to come up with 
to pay the cost to buy flight tickets, to buy gas, to rent like a touring van, to rent local drums, and you have a bed to sleep in and a breakfast to eat. And over two weeks, that amasses to pretty steep costs. So um, I'm working to afford that tour pretty much, but it it's there if we want it. I mean, the, the promoter, he loves us. He's, he just saw the cover of the album and he said, yes, you guys are back. I have to book you for a tour. So yeah, there's definitely a plan for that. That's more a plan than a dream, but it needs to be financed and I'm, I'm working on it. That's good. Sounds good. And I know there's a history of the band goes way back to years. So how has this journey been for you so far? I mean, for me, it's been great. I'm the part of the band that's been there from the very beginning to all the way to this day. Uh, started out as only playing lead guitars. We were a more pure melodic death metal sounding band in the beginning. We used actual, you know, common growls without any notes. So, I mean, the lyrics were there, but the humor in them weren't really always caught by the audience because of the way words are harder to read when somebody is growling them rather than singing them. And I felt overall that the music needs to have a melodic vocal. So in 2016, 2017, we started doing some on and off thing with the growler when he couldn't make it. And I did the vocals. And from 2017 autumn and forward, I've been the lead singer ever since. Also still playing guitar parts on every song on the album. Also still playing guitar solos live and playing some special guitar parts for outros and things like that. Uh, but I moved from a lead guitar player to a vocalist. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that that was the biggest transition for me over these years that I've been in the band. Because um, before I sort of had to coach our main person, our front figure, into how I wanted him to act to depict dwarf metal the way I imagined it. And obviously, some things are lost in translation. I mean, he was a great front man and great crawler. I would I still. It's my friend still, I love him, but when I took that role myself, I could use my body language, my facial expressions, everything that I use to depict the music. You you see it in the video, you'd see it if you come to see us live. Uh, and that comes straight from the heart, really. Just uh, how I'm feeling with the song, how I'm visualizing the lyrics. It shows both in how I make them sound, how I pronounce them, but also in how I depict them visually with facial expressions and and I think that's when we became really unique um, without patting myself too much on the shoulder. But we have this front figure that's really fitting for the theme of the band. Uh, I wouldn't call myself in any way like one of the greatest vocalists in the world, but I would compare myself to guys like uh, Per Hulkov in Rauptir and maybe Joachim in Sabaton in a way that mm. even though the mo- vocals might not be perfect, they have a very unique vo- voice that's if you change them, the band just wouldn't work anymore. And I think I have that for, but for Baruch Hazard. I, I gave it a face, I gave it a unique sound, I gave it what made it sound dwarf metal. Um, maybe that, that's not answering your question. I said the journey has been over 14 years, but that's that's the biggest transition for sure. Journey has been, you know, ups and downs. So bands contain people, people contain, you know, ordinary lives girlfriends sometimes kids and families and sometimes moving locations and shifting priorities so i mean i've had i've had to close to 20 members in barukasa to these days going between sessions and stand-ins to older members to temporary members and struggling to rehearse to get the same songs flowing again you know you know, but we with different people, and that's been a lot of work. That I think that's that's been the roughest part. Just no, like, are you really moving? Do we have to start over again? We got to show up in two months. Okay, I'll start calling some people, and always having to be the guy pulling that together. That's been the challenge. I think, uh, um, and that together with the fact that it costs money to play music rather than making it at the level we're at. So, so it's been challenging to motivate and inspire people to come and you know put charcoal in their faces and play rhythm metal parts behind me doing my whatever it is i do but i got a great bunch of guys now i think we're the tightest lineup we've ever been Mm -hmm. and the happiest 
I mean, the guys are playing with me now. Anytime I do something stupid on stage or just some move or just some weird comment to the audience and just being me, they laugh behind me. They they love it and they just can't wait to start playing the next song. So I'm I feel privileged to have them at my back and at my sides. Um, for now, I'm feeling really good about the lineup. That's or far has been the hardest part, just the, getting people together and making it stick. You know. That's good. Sounds good. And uh, what's next for Bar Kassad? Next is some some secret singles that are not going to be out for quite a while, but they're in the making. And we already mentioned the tour of Eastern Europe, and uh, I'm working hard to invade Finland as well because I know there's some great metalheads there that would love what we do. And um, I'm waiting with excitement for the review from Sweden Rock Magazine. Actually, that's the something that could almost make or break us. If they say it's shit, people are gonna know about that. But if they praise it, people are gonna know about that too. And we'll hopefully get some some emails like from some promoters that want us to play shows. Um. Like I'd say for me, that's the most important part, the live part of it all. Yeah. If Baruch Asad was just a studio band that posted stuff on YouTube and waited for comments and then you know went to bed, I wouldn't be doing it. I love the sweat. I love the proximity. I love facing the audience. I love hearing my own vocals shouted back at me. That's pretty much my spark of life. That's what keeps me going. So I'm hoping that the gold record would generate many many more live performances from us at venues we still haven't been to and festivals that are bigger than what we used to play and i'm hoping it's going to be a step up in in that sense fantastic fantastic marcus and marcus finally any message that you want to give to the fans around the world i mean the fans from the world of baruch Asad, i mean if you're already our fans from the bottom of my heart thank you thank you for loving our stuff thank you for listening to our stuff Keep sharing it with your friends. Anybody you share it to that shares it to someone else is finally going to reach some promoter that makes us come and play in your city. And that's really anything. It's the only thing I want to do. Take the war banners that we usually have on stage and smack them down in your town and just play dwarf metal and have a beer with you. That's, that's what I'm here for. So thank you and keep helping us spread the stuff. You are a better promotion for us than any magazine can ever be. Just make more people able to hear our music, show it to other people. That's the message I want to send. And thank you for already doing it. Fantastic, Marcus. And Marcus, I want to thank you so much for giving me today this wonderful opportunity to have you on this interview. A real pleasure to talk to you. And thank you so much for putting up an amazing album, Gold, this year. Great songs again. Happy to listen to each and every song from this album. Looking forward for more great things from you and Baruka. So thank you so much for everything. And you have thank a great for having me. My it was pleasure. a pleasure talking to you as well. Take care, Marcus, and have a great evening. Bye-bye. Same. Bye.